Dr. Eric Feigelding, the epidemiologist and senior fellow with the, American, the Federation of American Scientists, the first whistleblower on the COVID pandemic, former faculty member and researcher at the Harvard Medical School and Harvard's T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Uh, the best way to follow him is on Twitter, Dr. Eric Ding, D-R-E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G, uh, is where I get a lot of my COVID information. Dr. Feigelding, welcome back. Um, I, I'm seeing articles popping up about the possibility if, if COVID if, uh, co was able to combine in the body of an immune compromised person with the common cold virus, which is apparently what brought us Omicron, and please correct me if I'm wrong on that, um, it could just as easily combine in the body of somebody who has, say, uh, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, which has a 20% fatality rate, um, and, 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 or MERS could combine with the common cold. I mean, are, 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 there's this whole meme that viruses evolved to be less severe, um, yet uh, I, I, I don't think that comports with science. Tell us, what's the, what's the truth here? What, what, you know, is it time for us to say, okay, everything's cool, this is less deadly? Yeah, thanks for having me. That's a good question. Um, so first of all, I think it actually depends what the circumstances. Uh, MERS luckily doesn't exist currently in the wild, uh, really. And it's possible it can combine with a common cold. But what worries me more is it could combine with um, Delta. And, you know, there's some people saying Delta Cron as the new risk. But it's, it's the unknown part, uh, com part because it could uh, recombine in many different ways. And recombination actually creates more mutations, a more highly mutated virus than just regular mutation rates, which just goes by the regular error rates. The, the big concern is in an immunocompromised person, the virus can evolve and mutate so much, it will be so different than what we've seen before. And that's where we think uh, likely Omicron originally came from, um, in, in someone who's immunocompromised. And some people have had the virus uh, for over six months in some immunocompromised people. That's the biggest worry. And that's why, like, Omicron is very infectious, maybe milder, but that's almost a negligible effect compared to the infectiousness. But someday you could have something even worse. And some people say, well, 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 it'll just mutate to be something milder. That's not always true because uh, to be more contagious, usually the, the usual trick is to have a higher viral load. So higher viral load is driving contagiousness and uh, severity. So I don't think it will mutate to be um, mild completely. This is why we have to be vigilant of future variants. Yeah, this, it, it seems like a concern. Um, over in, in Finland, the uh, health minister there, uh, Minister of Family Affairs and Social Services, Krista Kiuro, on Friday uh, said that uh, they are concerned. She said there is a threat that Finland will see the emergence of the largest or one of the largest new groups of chronic diseases and that not only too many adults will suffer from the long-term COVID-19, but at worst also children. They define a, a, a chronic illness as one that has, quote, major impact on public health and the national economy through lowered working capacity and strains on health care. And she says this, uh, and, and, and then this professor of neurology uh, at the same conference said, this virus has been shown to enter the brain through the nose and its effects are also seen on magnetic resonance Im imaging. Around 20% of people infected see long-term cognitive impairment. Um, th that's, wow. Uh, tell us yeah. about long COVID and the possibility that, you know, just setting aside totally this issue of people getting sick, people ending up in hospitals, the ER room, all the stuff that yeah. everybody's talking yeah. about, just setting yeah. that aside yeah. totally. What about the possibility that we have, you know, we hit 60 million people infected here in the United States now. How many people are we going to have who are permanently disabled? Is this going to be the new arthritis or the new, um, uh, you know, uh, type yeah. 2 diabetes or, uh, you know, worry. fill in the blanks? Yeah, it's a huge, huge worry. And I want to say that when Finland makes these statements, the Finnish government is not political whatsoever when it comes to health. So when they put out this huge government warning about that one in two people could have long COVID symptoms, that is really serious. And furthermore, it also points out that these, if you want to have long COVID, you don't even have to be hospitalized. It's mild and asymptomatic people as well can develop long COVID, albeit somewhat less. But still, there's still a clear and present uh, danger 
uh, for these people. And I think there's also lots of other neurological things that we haven't even discovered yet. We already know that there's some sort of cognitive um, you know, dysfunction. There's another British study says that if you're hospitalized, you lose about seven IQ points. If you're not hospitalized, um, nine to eight, you lose like um, you lose about two to three points. That's still a lot, considering that lead poisoning in kids. We don't accept lead poisoning in kids in any society, but lead poisoning in kids is about two points of IQ damage. So, if mild COVID, mild COVID yields two points of IQ damage equivalent to uh, lead poisoning, that's not something we should tolerate as a society. Period. And there's going to be way more people with long COVID than just lead poisoning. And this is why we have to look forward as COVID is not just an infectious disease, but it is a chronic disease. And this chronic disease is something that's going to live with us for a long time. And just this weekend, the CDC reported that um, COVID could cause diabetes in kids. And this is we've seen that this report from last year as well of many kids developing type 1 diabetes after COVID. But this CDC report also confirms that there's higher risk, much higher risk. So that would be COVID uh, infecting the pancreas, basically, causing the same kind of viral pancreatic infection. Because besides neurological, there is other multi-organ damage. You know, inflammatory diseases, diabetes is also inflammatory disease, too. So we really think that the, the, the total scope of diseases affected by COVID is going to be much larger than just the infectious disease current symptoms and hospitalization that we see. Which, which brings us to my last question. Um, the, the message that over the weekend we heard from uh, Senator Rand Paul and Senator Ron Johnson of uh, Kentucky and Wisconsin, and that it seems to be being echoed as conventional wisdom across uh, conservative media, from, from right-wing podcasts to Fox News, is hey, you know, it's not so deadly, Omicron, uh, y- y- now is the time to go out and get yourself infected because that'll give you some immunity and, uh, you know, whether you're vaccinated or not, and just, you know, let's just get this sucker and, uh, you know, get this disease and get everybody infected and just get over it and get back to normal. And, and there's even, you know, people arguing that this should be the Biden administration's official position. What say you, Dr. Feigelding? No, I think it's very dangerous, especially this is what they've always been saying, this mass infection strategy, get it over. But guess what? We've had many uh, previous waves. We've had Delta. We've had all these. Every so often, it, there's a new variant that comes and clearly reinfects everyone who's been previously infected. And Omicron is one of those uh, viruses that has huge reinfections. Studies show that if you have convalescent plasma survivors of alpha, delta, beta, you have no um, protection almost uh, in your neutralization against the virus for Omicron. And it's so dangerous because you, there's long COVID. And remember, long COVID, even if you're no, no symptoms are mild, and the, uh, your immunity wanes uh, again, uh, over time, even your natural infection immunity, and you could have a variant that evades that completely, like Omicron evades previous Delta immunity. This is just a horrible strategy. It is, it is one of those, you know, short-sighted, you know, quarterly, oh, you know, you'll get a, a quick hit win. But you know what? In the long term, in three to six months from now, I'm worried. In six months from now, after Delta wave ends, how bad it, we could have another, another wave of something else. And that keeps me up up at night, and I think it should keep these Republican senators up at night, especially since it's their own base that they're slowly harming and killing off when it comes time to the election. I really hope that they have a long-term perspective of protecting their voters rather than just just pandering to their voters. Well, when you look at their defense of the tobacco industry, you look at their defense of the asbestos industry, you look at their defense of the fossil fuel industry, I don't think you can make the argument that, that, uh, you know, but but I I realize, you know, you're not a political guy, you're you're a science guy, and so I'll, I'll extract the politics from this. Um, but uh, is, is so so this strategy of just getting Omicron and getting over, it, it, which leads me to, to I guess what what actually is my last question, which is if Omicron or if COVID is um, like the common cold, which I believe is a coronavirus, or the flu, 
uh, and I don't mean that in terms of its severity, but in terms of its ability to reinfect us over and over and over again. I mean, it's not anybody who's had a little kid go into preschool knows <laughs> you, get, you can get the common cold 10 times a year. Um, uh, you get the flu once or twice a year, uh, typically at least you know, once a year, because there's constant, these constant new variations. Are we, we don't have a vaccine for the common cold, but we do for the flu. Are we going to end up as a society, one, you know, when we do achieve some sort of homeostasis relative to this virus, uh, probably just getting everybody getting vaccinated two or three times a year, and that's just going to be our new normal? Well, that's a good question. Um, there are many common colds. There's Besides common coronavirus, there's also rhinovirus. It's also considered common cold. Mm. There, there are so many infectious diseases. The best way is to, you know, uh, not just have vaccines, but also have air disinfection, air quality standards to disinfect the air against all viruses. Air disinfection and masks, by the way, are agnostic of your variant. They're variant proof. That's a neat trick, right? Yeah. But I think we sometimes forget that, that, you know, we have in outdoor air standards, we have water quality standards, but we don't have indoor air quality standards. I think that's one thing. That so you're suggesting that buildings than, should build better filtration systems in their uh, HVAC systems and put in those UV lights that kill viruses? Yes, exactly. That's that's the lo better long-term solution. And of course, with the vaccines, we want to build a universal vaccine. They're building a universal flu vaccine. They're getting close. They're hopefully they can find a multivalent, multivariant adapted um, uh, coronavirus vaccine that can also be, you know, omnibus coverage for uh, most uh, coronaviruses. And I think that's the way forward in addition to ventilation, air and air disinfection, which are, again, politics proof and human behavior proof, which we've learned from this pandemic could actually work way better in the long term. Brilliant. Dr. Eric Feigelding, follow him on Twitter at DR, as in Dr. Eric, E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G, Dr. Eric Ding.